Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer on this Friday, the 1st of July. Just a quick reminder that uh, on Sunday we'll be having at 8am uh, our BCP Holy Communion at St Mary's. Uh, then at 11 o'clock we'll be having a joint Eucharist at St Thomas's. So there'll be no 9.30 at St Mary's but we will be streaming the 11 o'clock from St Thomas's uh, as it is the Patronal Festival. So uh, Sunday is the feast day of St Thomas the Apostle of whom St Thomas is named after, so we'll be coming together to uh, to pray and uh, give thanks for the life and the witness of the church in Colnbrook, as well as uh, coming together to celebrate the Eucharist there as well. So please do get um, over to St Thomas's for 11. If you, uh, if you come to St Mary's at uh, 9.30, you'll be sorely disappointed, I'm afraid, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, you'll come and join us and celebrate with all of the Colnbrook folks. So as we come together this evening, let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night, to be praised in glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence, by the light of Christ, your living word, to dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me, my heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hand to you, my soul gasps to you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me, my spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray of one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this evening is Psalm 38. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Rebuke me not, O Lord, in your anger, neither chasten me in your heavy displeasure, for your arrows have stuck fast in me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation, there is no peace in my bones because of my sin, for my iniquities have gone over my head, the weight of the burden too heavy to bear. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and brought very low. I go about mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my flesh. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I roar about aloud because of the disquiet of my heart. O Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me. The light of my eyes is gone from me. My friends and companions stand apart from my affliction. My neighbours stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me, and those who would harm me whisper evil and mutter slander all the day long. But I am like one who is deaf and hears not, one that is dumb who does not open his mouth. I have become like one who does not hear, and from whose mouth comes no retort. For in you, Lord, have I put my trust. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, Let them not triumph over me. Those who exult over me, over me when my foot slips. Truly I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is ever with me. I will confess my iniquity, and be sorry for my sin. Those that are my enemies without any cause are mighty, and those who hate me wrongfully are many in number. Those who repay evil for good are against me, because the good is what I seek. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 5, from the beginning to the end of the chapter. Now the prophets, Haggai, Zechariah, son, uh, son of Ido, prophesied to Jews who were in Ju Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. Then uh, Zerub Zerubel, son of Sh um, Shiltiel, and Jeshua, son of Juzdak, set out to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem, and with them went, were the prophets of God helping them. At the same time, Tatiana, the governor of the province beyond the river, and Shithra, Bosnia, and their associates came to them and spoke to them thus, Who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure? They also asked them this, What are the names of the men who are building this building? But the eye of God was upon the elders of the Jew, and they did not stop until, uh, did, and they did not stop them until a report reached Darius, and an answer was returned by letter in reply to it. The copy of the letter that Tati, uh, Tatandia, the governor of the province beyond the river, <coughs> and Shethra Bosna and his associates, the envoys who were with, uh, who were in the province beyond the river, sent to King Darius. They sent him a report in which was written as follows: To Darius the king, all peace. May it be known to the king that we went to the province of Judah, to the house of the God of Israel, uh, to the great God. It is built of hewn stone and timber and is laid in the wall. This work has been done diligently and prospers in their hands. Then we spoke to those elders and asked them, Who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure? We also asked them their names for your information, so that we might write down the names of the men at their head. This was the reply to us. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the house that was built many years ago which a great king of Israel built and finished. But because our ancestors had angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed his house and carried away the people to Babylonia. However, King Cyrus of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, made a decree that this house of God should be rebuilt. Moreover, the gold and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem and brought into the temple of Babylon, these King Cyrus um, took out of the Temple of Babylon, and they delivered them to a man named um, Shishbazar, uh, whom he had made governor. He said to him, Take these vessels, go and put them in the temple in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be rebuilt on this site. Then this Shishbazar uh, came and laid the foundations of the house of the God in Jerusalem, and from that time until now it has been under construction, and it is not yet finished. And now, if it seems good to the king, have uh, have a search made in the royal archives there in Babylon to see whether the decree was issued by King Cyrus for the rebuilding of the house of God in Jerusalem. Let the king send us his pleasure in this matter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hopes of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us, well, whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Our New Testament reading is a continuation of Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 to 12. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he forced knew. But he, do you not know what the scriptures say of Elijah, how he pled with God, uh, with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, they have demolished your altars. I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what is the divine reply to him? I have kept for myself seven thousand who have not bowed to the knee of Baal. So too are the present times there is a remnant, chosen by grace. But if it is by grace, it is no longer the basis of works, otherwise grace would no longer be grace. What then? 
Israel failed to attain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened as it is written. God gave them a sluggish spirit. Eyes would not see and ears would not hear, and day, uh, down to this very day. And David said, Let their tail become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see, and keep their backs forever bent. So I ask, have they stumbled so as to fall? By no means. But, but through their stumbling salvation has come to the Gentiles, as so as to make Israel jealous. Now if their stumbling means riches for the world, and if their defeat means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will they, their full inclusion be? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray and give thanks for the day that has been. As we come towards the end, may you be with us, and may we rest well. May we rise in the morning to, to sing your praises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all who are in places of violence and places of death. We pray for those who are caught up in the bombardments, for those who are fleeing, seeking sanctuary and safety, for those who are in need of care and compassion. We pray for all who are fleeing places of violence, for all who are seeking you. Lord, help us to show kindness to those who are in need. Help us to be compassionate for those who have less than ourselves. Help us to act in a way that we would wish to be acted with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the soul of your witness, St Thomas. We pray for all who were brought to Christianity through his witness. For those churches named after him. We pray especially for all who will attend St. Thomas's in Colnbrook. Lord, give us strength not to doubt. Help us to curtail all our insecurities that we may have faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are struggling at this time. We pray for those who are struggling to make ends meet. For those who are in need of assistance and support. For those who are anxious and worry about the weeks and months ahead. We pray, Lord, for those who are looking for assistance via the food bank and the fuel bank. Help us to share with what we have with others who have less. Help us to look kindly and with compassion on those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray especially by name for Davy, Jilly, Megan, Mary, Tina, Robert, David, Peter, Rose, Sarah, Gwenna, Gillian, Brian, Chris, B, Pamela and Jean. We pray too for those who are known to you alone, Lord, for all who suffer in silence. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for those who reach the end of their lives and those who recently lost their lives. We pray especially by name for Bill and for Ben. We pray for all who are grieving, for all who carry the scars of loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whosoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of God, our G and, and, uh, sorry, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So please do join me on Sunday at 8 a.m. for the BCP Holy Communion at St. Mary's. And then at 11 o'clock we'll be having the Joint Eucharist at St. Thomas's celebrating their paternal festival. So celebration of St. Thomas Day. And that will be streamed online from 11. Uh, but obviously don't uh, come to St. Mary's for 9.30 because it won't be open. But if, in case I don't see you before, have a very good weekend. God bless and I will see you next week. <laughs>